I see. Hi, Andrea. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, Ben. Hello. How's everyone doing? Good. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Let's see here. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Oh, hi. Hi. Sorry. I had okay, no worries. Something wrong. Something wrong with my audio setup, but it's fine now. Trace is coming on here in a second. Hmm? Um, yeah, I was thinking for at least for this uh, first run, um, I, I would facilitate, um, but then we can set up a, a facilitator roto if you want to, if other folks are interested in running the meeting. It doesn't have to be always me. I'm also in, always on the other meetings. So. Yeah, yeah. Um I, I, I could run it. I wouldn't mind. Um I think you know anyone anyone here is also pretty pretty capable of doing so. So um I, I personally have no opinion on on anyone specifically at least. Sounds like you are you are our guy then, Ben. All right, works for me. Yeah, what we do in some of the working groups with uh, other projects is we have a kind of rota or we take turns and facilitating, so we can also do that. So it doesn't have to be always one one person. Okay, yeah, that, that'll make it a little bit easier to manage, too. Okay, uh, welcome, Jalander, um, and welcome, everyone, to the first City Van Tools and Architecture Working Group. Uh, everyone has a link to the notes already, but I'll just put it in the chat, just in case. Okay, so... I guess the first item I had put on the agenda was for facilitator rota we were just chatting about. Um, so I think I'd be happy to help facilitate as well. So at least maybe uh, Ben, you and myself, we can take turns or if someone else wants to be on the rota, wants to help facilitating, uh, just add your name to the list, please. Um, the, the second thing I wanted to bring up uh, briefly um, about tools and communication, just wanted to make sure everyone is happy with, with the tools that, that we have, or is there anything else we, we need? So right now we have the Hack and D uh, but for the meeting notes. And then, I mean, we could do things like have a dedicated Slack channel. Uh, 
I don't know that we need anything else. Um, I don't think we need a dedicated mailing list, but yeah, I just wanted to ask what people think about that. Uh, I think we should use the ones that are there for CD events and if down the road it gets too cluttered, because like in Slack you can create threads and stuff like that. So, uh, and I think that'll just give us a wider audience to keep everybody informed. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You know, if like if we if we uh, end up splitting, splitting things too much, we might not have uh, enough of the audience in, in each of the threads. Right. So I, I think I think it makes sense to keep everything together um, and it's easier to advertise like this, this working group too if things are all in one. So it'll it'll get more people interested as well. So, I, yeah, I, I echo that. OK, that makes it easier. And I, I agree, it makes sense. Uh, we should not spread our audience. Um, cool. Um, OK, um, and I guess the, the next, uh, the main thing for about today is the working group. I guess the name, but mainly the, the mission. And thanks, Steve, for preparing uh, the, the draft document. Uh, yeah, maybe. so so I would suggest we go over the draft document and maybe that'll tie better. We can loop back around into a name. Yeah, I just I just took the the header there is the same as the meeting just to for so like we said we can change that up. So yeah. when I wrote this, um, let me go over it real quick. Um, when I wrote this, the main goal. Um, I was seeing is like we talked yesterday where we're going to define um, the functional non-functional requirements for implementing CD events um, and then create an overarching architecture and implementation plan uh, and some of the, the keys uh, as part of that those two things that we would produce as output is making sure we have um, you know, seamless integration without having uh, the need to go and update every single pipeline or workflow, wherever you want to call them, uh, and make this a easy path to adoption is, is kind of the goal. Uh, and also make sure that we're able to scale and, and we aren't, you know, blowing up somebody's pipelines because we're too slow uh, type, of <laughs> type of scenario. So that was kind of the overall um, uh, idea I had for this working group for its mission statement. Does that make sense, or am I totally missing something? No, no. I think I think that covers the uh, the very high level, and I think I think that does does a pretty good job. Um, the one thing I would probably add though is more so on the areas of focus i know it talks about like all the technology and whatnot but one thing i think we're, we're kind of missing is the sdks like how things like talk to one and uh, like basically cd events tooling that's like that already exists toolings or libraries um should be another area of focus um so i don't know if i if you want me to like add that myself since it's your document i was like Maybe no just, go uh, ahead i oh, it okay. should be everybody should be able to have editor access Cool, cool. So you may want to reword number four there. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, event visualization. Yeah, I see what you said. Because okay. there, it's twofold. Because um, part of it is the. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Twofold in the in the objectives. Tool recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for yeah, for tools and libraries. All right. So in my mind, I I I envision that we end up producing a usable um, tool that um, will work out there and, and people can hook into for their open source projects. Exactly. Um, so um, I talked to uh, Michelle from the Linux Foundation last week and she said 
that Google has given the CD Foundation 100 grand in Google credits um, starting in July for a year. So we do have some money um, that we can actually stand up and run things uh, under the Linux Foundation as part of that. So we shouldn't be shy in actually implementing something and having it run out there for people to, to use. Um, and, you know, that's, that's my thought on that. And, and cool. so, so I, I, I kind of see like what you're talking about, Ben, there's, there's two pieces to it. One's the, the implementation of actually using the CD events in pipelines. And the other part is how do we get there, which is going to be the need for the SDKs. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yes, yeah, like kind of a I don't know how to process. phrase that, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's what I I kind of see that we're going to uh, need. Yeah, definitely. And then real quick on on the credits. So you said a hundred k. Is that just for CD events, or is that all of the Linux foundations? And then we just get like a slice of the pie. All of the CD foundation. Okay. Okay. So we, okay. So we'll, we can figure so, something out there then. So, I've, Yeah. I think that the credits were requested at least specifically to cover for CI calls for Tecton, but right. I guess, um, if there is, it's probably, or hopefully more than what Tecton will spend. Um, but, and, yeah. and because Tecton's moving to the CNCF, I think that one comes out of a different bucket out of the CNCF side. Yes, yes, but we don't know when that's going to happen. So we need yeah. to be just a bit careful there. So yeah. it's, I mean, we, we tech, the Tecton project submitted the proposal to the CNCF, but yeah, it may take months and months for yeah. that to happen. But anyways, there's, you know, when we when we host Ortelius in the cloud, we're a couple hundred bucks a month. So, uh, you know, six to 10 grand a year just for some base stuff, which I think will get us a long ways with CD events. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Ho hopefully it shouldn't be anything too, too expensive at least. In the yeah. 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 Well, I was thinking, cause if we had like the full hundred K, like the, the, I was like, oh man, the stuff that we could do, like, I was thinking like, we could even have like a playground, like where you could like do CD events, construct CD events and like it send to like a, a message bus and like send to, you know, just like to test the, the different technologies. Um, but yeah, like that, that would be expensive though. So that's why I was like, oh, we get, if we have a hundred K, then that could be afford. But if we only get a small slice of pie, then we probably don't want to do that. But yeah, that's, that's why I was asking. Um, yeah. Mm. And I, I can circle back around with Michelle and find out, that, um, how that's going to be divvied up. Yeah. 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 Sure. That, that'd be great. But yeah, I mean, since you mentioned the, the playground, Ben, I think, um, that's maybe not in in the very initial area of focus, but that's I think it would be very valuable to to have. As, I mean, with maybe growing scope, just starting very little, in the beginning could be just like uh, a sink where you could uh, send events, and maybe because we're building a webhook adapter, we could have the webhook adapter running there, so you could send events yep, yep. to it from the native format and then have like a, a small backend where we we keep i don't know the last few days of events that are coming through so that if people want you know to to point their tool to there they can send events see how they transform into see the events and what they would look like in you know visualization tool or something that yeah we, and then yeah. we start building yeah, so, I think you, you captured that perfectly andre sorry sorry to cut you off there i just wanted to interject one because uh because I know you mentioned in response to me, Andre, but uh, so yeah, I agree. The playground, you know, that's kind of like a longer term vision, but I, I was just wondering, you know, like that hundred K, like, you know, like, you know, if it's just a slice of the pie, you know, um, then, you know, we have to be a little bit more careful thinking about things of that scope, but, you know, from the sound, like I don't do, you know, I've never dealt with the, the money side of things. And, you know, obviously I think you guys have more uh, information on that, but if that's something we can do in the future, like, cause like you said, Andre, I think this would be very valuable to customers mm -hmm. that are interested in using CD events. And, you know, if they're able to see what the events would transform into like that, that would be a huge win for them. Right. Like that I think would be crucial. So yeah, a hundred percent. So agreed with everything you said. Um, and then we could figure out what, what the best path for, or when, when the, when the best time to implement that would be. 
Yeah, so let me yeah. just finish running through the the objectives and then we can get into the areas of focus which the playground kind of falls into. So you know, obviously we wanted to find the functional requirements, the non-functional requirements, uh, create the reference architecture, um, and those will all be, I don't know if they'll be the same doc, more than likely be a single document, uh, maybe three documents either way. Um, we may break it into three documents just to make it easier to work on in parallel. Um, again, the tool work recommendations, um, this we could probably expand on more around um, how the SDKs need to interface with uh, message brokers on those lines. Um, but that's going to be the idea behind it. Um, I know uh, we're talking about like K Native events uh, versus NATS versus, you know, there's a bunch of ways Kafka um, in the tool recommendations. I think we'll need to dive into when we look at our requirement of scalability and performance. Um, and then finally, uh, one or the other would be to uh, kind of, I don't know if it'll be a, a, a best practices guide or more like a tutorial type of how do you implement things, you know, kind of like a developer guide um, uh, journey on how do you implement uh, events uh, is why I'm kind of thinking for number five. Um, any other things we need to cover in the, in the objectives? Well, on, on point three, I think I noticed you put like reference architectures uh, in plural. Um, do you have in mind like different use cases for different kind of um, areas? I know that he's just been talking about, you know, uh, DevOps and Finos and different other uh, I don't remember the complete list, but different industries, kind of. I th um, yeah. So I think the the use cases will come into play um, when I talk about you know. So it may be slightly different for like ML ops um, versus DevOps. Um, I, I just put it out there as something that we may need to expand upon um, uh, to handle use cases that I didn't think of, <laughs> you know, the, the, the typical use cases, you know, is the DevOps use case that were around, you know, the supply chain right now. But if we want to get into other things like um, project management and uh, issue tracking, those type of things may expand the reference architecture further. That's why it's plural. It, it, it just. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, and I think there are also, like you said, there are like uh, self supply chain security, but there are other use, use cases or maybe functional requirement like observability of pipelines as well that could, yeah. you know, uh, be relevant, uh, visualization and, and those kind of things. So um, there is a use case with, um, internal development platforms as well. Um, but we have been talking with uh, the Canoe folks about, about this and how to use seed events as an interoperability layer there and a way to kind of surface um, data from the different tools into like uh, something like Backstage so that you, you get all the data in front of your developers using like an interoperability layer. Um, so yeah, there, there, there is a, there, there are a few use cases. So maybe as part of number three, or as, yeah, um, I as think well, we, three, we could try. It. Yeah, uh, let me see. We we could try to identify these and decide which one we want to to focus on first, or at least have a list. Something like that, based on new cases to. Something along those lines. All right. So I added number five. Let me know if this fits, but I think this is very important, especially like at, at the start of a foundation of when we're designing things and and proposing new new libraries, new tooling, new concepts. 
is that we ensure that we're consistent. We're consistent in our semantics and we're consistent in the utilizations and the patterns of, of the tooling. So like for instance, right, um, a good example of this is some you know things might have like a, a get, like a, an API that's like, you know, get account or something like that. But another tool, instead of having get in front of it, might just have account, you know, it's just an account method and it returns the account. I want to make sure that whatever we decide on, you know, uh, in terms of um, the patterns, that if we go with get account, it's going to be consistent across all the tools. So, you know, when someone transitions to, let's say they, they, didn't, they want to use enough an, a different tool or extend a different tool, they could kind of guess what it's going to be without needing to go look at the uh, documentation every single time, right? Um, so it allows, I think, for just an easier um, extendability um, and and usage of of, of tooling. Um, let me know if that if that works for objectives. So I think for an objective, I would say no, and the reason being is I think that should be covered that objective should be covered by the other working group that's working on the schema. Um, at this point, we should be, um, you know, uh, removed from the, the, those pieces. Does that make sense? Um, kind of, except the SDKs though, even though they utilize the schemas, it's all custom code generation. So like the method names and whatnot could be different based off of the implementation of the SDK. So that's why I kind of put it there. Um, like the, the nouns are the same, right? Like account is the same, but like I said, the Java SDK might put like get account and then the Go SDK might just have account, which returns it. Right. So, um, it's more of like just providing consistency at, at that level rather than at the spec level. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think some some uh, consistency where applicable, it's it's fine. It's something we, we can look at. I mean, I, I would like to make sure that we, we kind of follow things that are like typical for each language uh, though. Um, so like if a Java developers um, but the SDK, the Java SDK would look like something that the Java developer may expect, and so go for the Go one and the Rust one, etc. Um, and they're kind of different conventions in how naming methods and those kind yes, of things. Yes. So uh, what so you're I talking about, like, sure. yeah, 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 you're talking about like idiomatic, uh, you know, uh, per per the language, right? And I think you know we yeah. can achieve that while also achieving consistency, right? Like. Um, so I, I think, I think that should be fine. Um, you know, because I, I think for the most part, uh, like every language is pretty, is pretty consistent on like method names and, and, and patterns as well. Like for instance, right. Like if the, if the Java SDK uses the builder pattern for one thing, and then the, um, the Go SDK uses like a procedural pattern, like the builder pattern is also a prevalent and go right we should keep those probably those two concepts um uh consistent on how you build things right um because you know like i said those are design patterns that can definitely be uh be shared across languages but i do agree that you know we should follow like number one it should be that we should first um make sure that we are following the best practices of the language followed by uh, where we can make it consistent. Would, should, I, should I add that uh, as an addendum to the the tooling and library consistency? Would that would that suffice? I guess is my question. Yeah, I would add just uh, following the best practice of each programming language. Ah, cool, cool. All right. Just it'll give some clarity. Yeah, good point. Yeah, also following best practices. Okay, cool. All right. I think anything else on objectives? Um, I think you covered it pretty pretty well. Yeah. So I did want to ask about uh, the do documentation and and the guidelines, right? So, what is the idea with just kind of documentation and and guidelines in in general? Are you thinking like documentation, like um, so when we say comprehensive documentation, like we're we're gonna house a 
Um, so what I, I guess here's the question. So Java uses Java docs, right? So our, my guess is that we just make sure that the Java docs are fully, um, you know, comprehensive, or are we saying like that plus we have documentation, um, like maybe a documentation website for like tooling or something like that. I, I'm just trying to understand the scope of what you're talking about here. Um, it would be documentation on how to use it basically. Okay. So, so just wherever. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So it could be just a, you know, marked on in the Hugo server or something like that. Um, but basically it doesn't have to be, you know, hundreds of pages, but as a new person that wants to start using the platform, how do I do that? Perfect. Yeah. And then I guess what we can do too is maybe, you know, extend documentation a little bit with saying comprehensive documentation and examples, because yeah. I, I find that a lot of times, like something can be very comprehensive in terms of documentation, but be missing examples, which really kind of like tie all the pieces together. Um, and I think, yeah, having that will, will definitely help users. Um, uh, yeah. Utilize or envision using CD events. Yeah, I think it, um, that's a great point. I mean, if I understood correctly, I mean, was, I guess once we have the, the use cases identified, this could also kind of be associated with that in terms of example, like I want to implement this use case with CD events. How do I go about that? And then yeah, yeah. we would say basically, yeah, you'll need these pieces of software and then you can re we can reference to the documentation how to install them and maybe to the playground if we have it to, to try things out, but, um, yeah. All right. So, so on the, um, the areas of, of focus, these are the ones I came up with. Um, so we actually have to, um, look at, uh, around the message broker, if that if we have to decide a name, if it's going to be event broker, message broker, whatever we want to call it. Um, uh, so the broker, um, how to handle persistence, um, and the most obvious one is using a document store and uh, a graphing uh, database, um, which one we'll have to get into. Uh, and then on the, the data collection side, I kind of put this as a, a catch-all term. Um, basically, how are events triggered? Um, so the way I look at a, an active event would be something like uh, Jenkins plugin when a workflow starts, kicks off a you know st uh, a workflow event. Um, that would be an active event because Jenkins is actually doing it, it itself through a, like a plugin. Uh, a passive event would be uh, a process that goes out and monitors or pulls like a GitHub repo for a release. Um, and when the release is published, then that uh, at a release, a published event would be uh, triggered that at that point. So there's there's two and eventually um, the reason why this exists is because like right now we can't go into the GitHub uh, code base and change how they um, manage of, uh, you know, send out events um, at that level. So the, that's where the, the active and passive event creation is going to come into play uh, for, for this stuff. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then, make... and then it, it also kind of ties into number five. Um, so for example, I've had conversations with a couple folks from, uh, the Docker community and the Docker build X engine would be a perfect place to go into the, uh, make a pull request to trigger a, a build event or a publish event from the Docker build engine itself. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to need some uh, cross project collaboration. That's going to go totally outside of the Linux foundation, but it will be needed um, for uh, event adoption down the road. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. So, okay. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's, yeah, I think, I think the points you make, like I thought data collection was a little bit different than what I thought it was, but after you explained it, it was, that's why I was like a little, I was trying to understand it properly because what I, what I think after you uh, explained it, I think what's kind of, what's uh, what might need to be added to this list is um, metrics, right? Because that's a big sell that we do at, at CD events. But um, right now we, we talk about Dora, but like, we don't really talk about, you know, like what metric, you know, you know, what met other metric services or, um, oh. you know, how, how it's going to integrate or, or things of that nature. So I think that might be a good call out. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was on here. It just got overwritten. Oh, gotcha. I might have accidentally deleted it. Oh yeah. I did accidentally delete it. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just, uh, something like that cool cool yeah i think that that should cover it um and then what else is there so okay i'm just trying to envision the architecture because i'm like there's like a metrics there's a message broker there's like authentication at some point so we might need to focus on authentication at some point we probably need an api gateway so i'm kind of like going all i'm just like spitting out everything that i think that is needed like to have like a full working system um, for for CD events, and then you already mentioned like uh, persistence, you know, like a document store with like uh, you know maybe GraphQL or something like that. So I think I think that kind of covers that. Um, but I don't think we need to put authorization and authentication. Or maybe I think, we do. I think they could be subtopics. For, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. So when you go and go and so basically these are going to be. Uh, in the requirements documentation, um, these would be the things that we'd want to focus on. Um, and as part of that, uh, authentication uh, would be one of the, the, the possibilities that we need to address. Or the other way to do it is in your non-functional requirements, you can state in this initial go around, we are not going to address um, any authentication of private repos, for example. Um, and you just kind of scope that out and deal with it later. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. All right, I was just wondering like, you know, if we needed to put it somewhere, but it sounds like, yeah, I think I, I really like the idea of making it like a sub point in, in another documentation because I don't, yeah, I agree completely that we don't need to make that the main area of focus because that has been pretty, it's, that's been solved pretty pretty well. Um, so I think that shouldn't be too hard to um, to add later even. So I think I think that should be yeah. fine. So. So like in the non-function requirements, we talk about security and scapability and maintainability. Um, and there you even get into like SLAs, SLOs, those type of things. Um, and as for part of the non-functional requirements, we can say uh, we're going to deal with, I was kind of thinking uh, for the initial CI CD tools would probably be um, to give us a good breath would be uh, GitHub, Jenkins, uh, GitLab, and probably Spinnaker. Um, we should or, probably include Garrett as well. I don't know if you said Garrett because I no. know Ericsson is, they're, they're a Garrett user. So, and and one of, you know, they're already developing technology in CD events using Garrett. So we, we might as well include that in the list. Yeah. I just didn't want to say we're going to go out and, um, you know, implement uh, events for everything you know, <laughs> yeah. for 12, 12 different tools exactly. or we'll never get it done. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But we want to make sure that, um, and I have a feeling once we get through one or two of them, you're going to see the rinse and repeat um, uh, process happen. Yeah, so that's something, okay, yeah, th this will come later, but I've, I, the rinse and repeat, like I've solved it in a pretty good way where it should be pretty easy to add new um, new plugins to the adapters where it will allow transition to different, like whether you're using uh, GitHub versus GitLab versus Garrett, it should transition pretty seamlessly.
and then um, just the general thought. I, oh, then just down, down at the bottom are um, the meetings, uh, you know, the, the boilerplate contributing. We'll just need to update the contact information now that we're going to use the same. I just left those blank for now um, as the rest of the CD events. Um, and then we may need to get repo for this for the code base because the code base will be different uh, well we, we don't necessarily have to we can make it part of um do the sdks each have their own repo yeah they do yeah so we may as well stick with that and go ahead and go with another repo for uh the broker yeah yeah i think that makes sense um and on that note um i think we could we, we all have a per, uh, at least i know i have a pretty good idea of of what the message broker is going to look like um some possibilities out there so what we can do is just start standing up more of a de development environment instead of a playground um that we can start uh put a message broker and start sending them some test events around um and then work out from there and and start hooking together the SEKs with that oh maybe another objective is is testability of things so i guess that should just no maybe that's not objective that's just something that kind of like should be a good guideline that we follow because i i noticed you mentioned like this um you know sending like uh you know things with the message broker it would be good like if we can validate like with the sdks with other tools that uh you know do an integration test of these test suites but yeah i don't think it needs to be in this doc um maybe it could be in one of those sub points um but i don't know if the maybe that's yeah, in the non-functional requirements, maybe we can talk about testing because yeah. I noticed that maintainability is in there. Yeah, we can all add testing then. Yeah, uh, yeah, perfect. All right, cool, cool, cool. Right, so um, I'm. It's not clear for me for 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 the repo. I think we. I agree. We need a repo. I think it's a repo where we could store then the. Uh, I mean, when we define documents for functional requirement or functional requirement architecture, those kind of things, is that a repo where we want to store this kind of documentation? Um, yeah, so what I was thinking is, so let me know if this is what you guys kind of envision. I think you're on the same page as me, Andrea, but like how I was envisioning, rather than just kind of like jumping into the metrics broker to start implementing, my thought process is we would have a tech doc first um, once that got once that gets approved and like flushed out, you know, the, and, and merged into, you know, maybe it's called like the architect uh, repo or something, you know, CD events architecture or something like that, architecture spec or, or tech docs or something. And once that gets approved, then we can have a repo that implements uh, said thing, right? Um, and I think that pattern is probably good um, rather than trying to, um, the worst, worst case is, or the worst feeling is, is when you implement something and then someone's like, no, I don't really like this architecture. And then, you know, there's a use case that you didn't think of, and it kind of like requires you to like re re architect everything. So I think starting with a proposal or a tech doc first describing how you're going to implement something is, is vital. And I, I noticed that we don't outline, um, kind of like this or the path forward on implementation like what are the necessary steps from going from idea to to code right maybe we that's something we need to document i don't know if it needs to be in here um pro it probably does but I, I think we need to come up with a series of steps to kind of like explain um you know what what the the overall process is for from idea to code you know what are the necessary steps to get there thoughts well, you'll have all your requirements um, of what and basically the overall uh, reference architecture. So you'll have your blueprint of uh, what is out there and the recommended tools to implement it. So I think that's where this working this this document and working group would kind of stop 
and then we go into the next phase of actually doing the the uh, implementation gotcha um, gotcha so um kind of on that topic i think we i would to kind of clarify the the name of the working group i i would i envision it as a cd events implementation working group and we're at the requirements phase of that <laughs> yeah i think i think implementation uh is good um let me think implement yeah it, it, dude, i suck with names but i i'm okay with implementation <laughs> like I, i've just always been terrible with names i'm, I'm also okay with the tools and architecture but i think implementation is also probably makes more sense because it, it's more than just tools and architecture, right? Like tools and architecture just kind of implies that we're we're talking about just the design, right? But we're doing right. more than that. We're 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 taking it one step further. So maybe maybe it needs to be a little bit more descriptive of what what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, I I, I like you said. I think the um, tools and architecture kind of just makes it sound like we're at doing a bunch of documentation and not uh, not the uh, the next step. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, I, I like implementation. I think that covers it pretty, pretty well. Um, and yeah, if we can come up with any other names, maybe we can just like vote on it uh, on the next uh, next meeting as well. And then, um, so I, I guess, so I kind of travel back a little bit. I, I want to make sure I'm understanding this correct. So would we have a separate repo called like, let's call it the implementations repo, which would have like a, like a, the functional, maybe there's a folder in there called like functional requirements. There's another one called non-functional requirements, another folder called like reference architecture. And then the idea would be step one, like you maybe create a GitHub issue or something like that, where you propose an idea or an architecture and people give it like a thumbs up or something, you know, however that happens. And then someone create, you know, sends a PR with, with some proposal of, you know, in the appropriate folder, once that gets approved and merged, then we start the implementation. Is that kind of like the flow that we're thinking of? I guess what I'm asking is, do we need a repo for, for these documents is, is what I'm getting at. I think the 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 way we did it with Ortilius was we have a um, a documentation repo, and that documentation repo would include um, like this document. It would rec include all the the functional, non-functional, the architecture, and then it would also include your documentation and guidelines, and that would be kind of your if we needed to do tutorials, it would go into that um, that repo, and then there would be a second repo once the coding starts with the actual um, code base. So what ends up happening is the the documentation repo can, if you base it on like a Hugo server and Markdown, uh, you can uh, host that as part of the website. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so in the other doc. Um, then we could probably put an action item to create like the, the you know, the documents or this working group um, initial like um, repo that's needed. And then we can, we can start there. And then um, whoever is interested in writing the first tech doc for, for the message broker is, you know, is more than welcome or welcome to. Um, and, and we can kind of go from there. Okay, cool. I, I was just making sure I was trying to understand the flow or if it was already defined, maybe I missed it. But yeah, I was just trying to make sure I, I was on the same page as everyone. Yeah. And I will take a stab at um, the first pass of the, of the, around the, oh, well, let me see. I got a bunch of stuff from Mortilius mm -hmm. that I have a, a pretty good starting point from. So um, for our next meeting, I'll bring a bunch of stuff then we can figure out what else how we want to divvy it up and uh expand upon it okay perfect. I'll, I'll, give, no. I'll give us a starting point look at it that way all right awesome awesome super excited all right that sounds awesome and right now right now i don't think we need a repo because the easiest for us to collaborate is just in google docs for now um and then when we get further along, we can convert them into Markdown and load them into a repo. Uh, I think we should start creating a repo. Okay. Um, but I mean, 
So do do we want to use Google Docs for for these documents? No, I'd rather I'd rather have it in GitHub mostly because that's what we do for the spec, and also it's more visible to the outside world. Like Google Docs is fine, but if you want to search for something, like it's really like Google Docs is not going to be the first thing you that pops up when you search for like implementation, right? Like, um, but and if there's a CD events uh, implementation, like you just type that in you know, GitHub's going to pop up, right? It might not be the first thing that pops up, but it's definitely going to pop up. Yeah, that's fine with me. doesn't matter. Okay, well, um, I, I guess I can um, go ahead and, and create the repo. Yeah, um, but we can always re rename it if we end up down the road yeah, change. That's not a problem. And and I think we can we can have the readme with like working group participant and how to join and some details and those kind of things. Um and we can have like a basically I can extract what we, we have with the comments uh with the updates from the Google Docs and put it there so that when we point people to to the working group we say okay well this is what we're doing. Uh, if you want to join us and, and collaborate. Uh, sounds cool. good. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea. Cool. Um, all right. Um, and, and I guess about the playground, we um, I added it in the agenda, but we, we kind of mentioned it already. It's probably not something happening right away, but I think it's something that is really good to, to keep in the back of our mind. Um, I was thinking because um, also we mentioned earlier, we, we, we will want to have kind of some kind of development environment kind of a line between us that we can use to, to work. So we could probably do something like a, um, maybe an, something like an infra repo. Um, I don't know, with Terraform or whatever folks are familiar with um, that we can use, you know, to set up the, the pieces that we need so that it's repeatable. And once we get to a point where we, we can actually host this somewhere, um, we already have the, the infra bits for doing that. Yep, that sounds good. Cool. And um, I just added that create GitHub issue. So like when you create the repo, I think, you know, it'd be easy just like add that as an issue so it doesn't get lost in the in the in the meeting notes and so like you know we can always go back and look at it and and decide when you know if we need to add a milestone to it we can always add it when we when we're ready to implement if 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 you're okay doing that or i can add i can create that issue if if um if you create the repo as well no it's it's fine um, i can create the issue as well that's no problem thanks man um yeah uh, I guess what another thing, I mean, we, it's probably part of the tools, um, and related, I guess, to, to hosting things. Um, one thing that might be, be good to, to have, I was thinking, um, for, for GitHub, having a GitHub application that people can install in their organization if they want. And so something that basically listens to, to their events and spits out city events, um, but without people having to host the actual application somewhere. So we could have some, once, I guess, once we get to, to that point where we, we get some money we wanted to, to invest, uh, maybe we could host the, the application for, for folks so that it becomes really easy for them to, to get started getting CD events from both for their GitHub repositories. Yeah, and I didn't really go into it, but one of the um, architectural requirements is we'll need the ability to forward events um, between multiple message brokers. So, for example, it, let's say um, the OpenSSF or the Linux, just the Linux Foundation is running uh, a message broker that's listening to all the projects, all the events happening and all the CNCF and CDF and all the projects are, are uh, in the Linux Foundation are producing events. Um, so if I'm inside of a company, I have my own implementation, let's say Fidelity is running their message broker, 
um, and they want to get notified when um, a new release of uh, some package out there, let's say there's a new new Kubernetes plugin that gets published. Um, that event would go into the public uh, event uh, message broker and then it could get forwarded on to the Fidelity message broker uh, at, at that level. So I think for people to start playing with events, if we're actually using events for all of the Linux Foundation, we'll have enough stuff for people to play with. You know, and that's a long-term goal. Yeah, and specific to that use case, because I've thought about this quite a bit um, with like mess chaining message, I call it chaining message brokers, mm -hmm. is one problem that we'll need to figure out or document or uh, have some way of solving, whether that's through SDKs or, you know, just document what people need to do is item potency, like making sure that they're not consuming the same event. Like, let's say they're listening to two message brokers and they get the same event because one message broker is forwarding uh, to the other message broker, right? Um, so we need to make sure that um, users are aware that if they're listening to multiple message brokers, they may get the same um, the same event. And if they are, you know, what what do they do? Um, do you know do the SDKs automatically handle it, or do um, or do they need to you know manage that themselves? You know, so I think I think that's a problem that we'll need to figure out. Um, but definitely, you know, when, when the design doc comes with message brokers that I imagine that's going to be a, a bullet point in there is like, how do we chain message brokers? How do we deal with item potency? Um, so I think, I think that's an interesting conversation to have. Yeah, exactly. And I, that's why I just didn't want to get into the weeds right now around it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it can be pretty complicated. All right. Um, so we only have seven minutes left. I guess one um, last thing um, that comes to mind that we might want to discuss either today or in the next uh, instances is how do we bring more people to this working group? Because I think we, we have a pretty uh, large scope or things that we want to do. Um, and we are a small group of people here. So I think if we can have more uh, people involved uh, from potential CD events and users, um, it would be great. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, just wanted to put this out there. And, you know, I think it's something that we need to consider on a regular basis, how we can bring more people, get more people involved in contributing to use cases, contributing to architecture, contributing to software development and so forth. Yeah, that that is the hardest thing I think of, of open source, right? <laughs> is uh, is uh, being able to market yourself well. Um, and I agree. Uh, I think what we can do, just kind of like start small, is because um, we know there's a, a bunch of companies already looking to use CD events, or already looking at implementations, you know, and and are already doing some implementations themselves, right? So I think it might be a good step to identify those people, those companies. I can think of two or three off the top of my head um, and then figure out, you know, the best way to contact them and, and see um, if they're, you know, willing to participate, get some interest, you know, just kind of advertise to them, you know, that we have this new working group, you know, that their knowledge and their implementation could be very valuable, something that we might even consider using um, if they're willing to, you know, open source it. So, yeah, I think, I think that might be a good small first step. And then, you know, we can figure out how we can continue growing it. I think that's going to be an ongoing question, but, but I'll probably start there because, you know, like, you know, there's, there's only, yeah, three or four, four different companies right now in here, but, um, a lot of the implement, uh, implementators, um, you know, I think Fidelity is one of them. Um, and then, uh, JP Morgan's another one of them, you know, so there's already these, these two companies that are already looking at, or that are already doing implementation that aren't a part of either the, the, um, the, the spec SIG nor this SIG. So I think we need to reach out to them and, and really let them know that, um, you know, that, that we started this, um, this, uh, this new working group. The other thing that's going to be important to my microphone is to reach out to the open SSF. Uh, they have a, you know, they, they should have investment in this because they're building out these tools that nobody's using 
on, and, and it, it's the truth. You know, S bombs maybe, but um, you know, people are trying to implement open uh, SSF scorecard. There are there are many tools in the in the that they're building out that they are having trouble with onboarding just because they're having to create brand new workflows that get executed. They're having to update the pipelines. It's not it's not easy for them right now. So I think that getting the um, leveraging some of those groups like the um, the security tool belt. I'm not sure what they call it anymore. I think it's called the tool belt. Uh, there are, there's probably three or four different working groups over there that we might be able to get them um, excited about this. Uh, FinOS is another one. So I feel like we should look within this, this, the Linux Foundation and look to see what potential groups are, are working on this. Like I said, I think yesterday, I'm surprised how many DevOps groups there are within the Linux Foundation. Overall, there's some in the CNCF. The CNCF folks probably would be interested in some of this. So in order to make it real though, I think we have to have the, the um, we have to look, we have to have everything in, in order. So getting the functional um, requirements done uh, and, and have a project and, you know, some issues started in the repo is what we need to do because what they won't want to do is they won't want to start the group. They will want to get involved in the group once it's already running, and then they will. It will be easier for us to get contributors. So I think it's fine that we have a small group right now because I think you guys are the ones who should be writing the architecture. You get too big of a group, it may never get done. <laughs> um, and That's certainly getting yeah, and getting reviews from these folks after we have finished it is is awesome. So I think that, and that was one of the reasons why I told the FinOS group we didn't want to do anything until September. I think during these sleepy months of July and August, if we can get a good draft of that architectural doc, then start blogging about it uh, and getting some um, eyes on it and taking it around to some of these groups will be helpful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then just so I'm making uh, sure I understand OpenSSF and FinOS, the two companies that you mentioned. Um, so are they interested in CV events or are they are they having a problem and they're looking for a solution and they just haven't found haven't found CD events yet or or aware of it just haven't started the implementation? Like I'm just trying to understand where they are in the CD. Yeah. Events. So if you ever attend an Open SSF uh, working group meeting, you will find that they are really into security. Okay. Okay. But they don't understand DevOps that well. So what they like the Open SSF, Open SSF scorecard goes through and lists about 14 different things about your Git repo, about how secure it is. Oh, um, okay, okay. So in order for that to work is you actually have to run the scorecard Golang program against your repo and right, commit. Right, right. So- And same as an SBOM, you have to add yeah. SBOM generation to your workflow. Mm -hmm. So- to get your scorecard, it means that you have to go, and they only have a GitHub action. Um, oh, they have some stuff for GitLab now. But basically, you have to go and add a GitHub action to every single repo that you have in order to generate the scorecard. So that's the big DevOps nightmare. Gotcha, gotcha. They okay. have a, the, the, yeah, there's an alpha, what they call the Alpha Omega project, which started four years ago. Yeah. And their goal was to uh, add security tooling to the uh, the hundred, um, the top one hundred open source projects. They're still working on it. Okay, okay. But they haven't even been able to do twenty five a year. And I went and try, tried to talk to that group at the um, yeah, yeah. open source summit, and they it sounded like they had resolved to just getting people to just try to do static code analysis at the build state, just to see if there are vulnerabilities at build time, and and that was as best that they could do. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So from, okay. So from what I gather then is that they have a problem scaling out their, their implementation where, and this is something that CV events could potentially help with. Um, okay. But yeah. Okay. That, thank you for filling me in the context with that because I was trying to understand, yeah, like exactly where they were in, in the CV events world. Um, and you wouldn't so believe, I'm, Ben, you wouldn't believe the amount of tools they're trying to generate. They've tried to create, they've got open source projects that have one person working on it, which I think is uh, insane. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they're just trying to produce all of these security tools 
And everybody, it's such a, you know, there's a big money grab, obviously, because there's companies getting funded out of it. So everybody's trying to generate these tools. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so great. Mm -hmm. But the point is they're generating all these tools, but they don't really have an easy way to onboard them. Yes, there is yes. no good way to onboard them. So then they start, if you talk to like, we had a long discussion with Red Hat because um, Anne-Marie Fred is on our governing board. And she said for Tecton, what they did was they just decided to do all their own sep right, create all their own separate uh, so, security workflows. Okay. Yeah. So, that, that, does, that does not scale. Okay. I see. No, I see it problem. doesn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's why um, it, yeah now you now you see why CD events is yeah. so important in order to make this happen you know and and I told the Finos people I told them I said you know we are all running around with our fly undone and nobody's mm. telling us right 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 <laughs> okay okay awesome <laughs> and, well and okay. they got it they got it just like you are now it's like so, this is a critical piece of the puzzle right, so right. our our actual the way I look at it is our actual end user are other open source projects right right so and if we if you looked at and there's a list for alpha omega um you know alpha like tracy said was supposed to be the top 100 that needed help to fix the security issues now those are going to exist outside of um the linux foundation they could be you know uh the click uh, Python module is one of the most popular ones out there, and that's who they're going to go give money to to help fix security issues in, which has nothing to do with the Linux Foundation, but it is a security uh, issue, um, you know, source of, of headaches. So on that front, you know, these us going in passively adding in um, the ability to generate ass bombs, the ability to do um, vulnerability scanning, the ability to do the scorecard, um, all passively without having those project teams start going updating all their workflows will be will get us a lot of um, visibility. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. All right, now I understand uh, why. Okay, I, now I understand like the you know to start with small and then also you know definitely having the the this group a little bit more fleshed out before you reach onto open SSF because um, they already seem like they have their hands full. Um, okay, cool. And it's All not right. even that they don't, they just have their hands full is they're not DevOps engineers people as well. Okay. Okay. They're not at all. And, and the problem is you end up doing this multiple times. So, yeah. so I want to, um, add a scorecard. That's one go at the, the pipelines Then I want to add S bomb. That's another go at the pipelines. Now I want to add signing. There's another go at the pipelines. Now I want to do signed S bombs. There's another go at the pipeline. It just goes on and on and on. So you go yeah, and visit, yeah. visit these workflows multiple times and the DevOps engineers just go, no, we're not doing it. We'll right, just, deal, right. we'll just <laughs> it's easier for us to just deal with security vulnerabilities than and being they hacked that yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay okay cool well i think i think we're at time and thank you again yep. for both yeah. Yeah, both steve and tracy for all that context because i was i was trying to understand like where openness was so really appreciate it um and then uh i guess for next week uh steve you said that you were going to share some some docs and some um architectures on on the uh the message broker right yep i'll, I'll okay perfect i'll I may cross over into persistence and other stuff. I'll just see. I have to. I have to look at what, where my starting point is. And like I said, it'll just be a draft starting point, and we can build up on it from there. All right, sounds good. Super excited. Well, all right. Well, thanks everyone. Really, this yeah, this I think is going to be really going to go a long way. So appreciate everyone that's here, and uh, and then we'll see you. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Then, all right. Sounds good. Thanks everybody. Okay. All right. Thank Bye, you. Everyone. Bye. Right. Bye. Thanks. Bye.
I hope I didn't seem too pushy and saying, nope. we gotta, we got to write this and it has to run out there. We've got to have a service. No. We're just not creating some something that something can install down the road in their company. That's not going to get us anywhere. <laughs>
Oh my God, what am I doing? What the fuck?